I would like to talk a little bit about the Delta Chakra. Uh, the Delta Chakra is a chakra which definitely not everybody uses. Uh, it's a chakra which actually most people never use, but it's important to know about its existence. It's a one-sided chakra, it only exists on the back of the body, and its position is about halfway between the rear of the heart chakra and the rear of the throat chakra. So it's more or less between the between the shoulder blades. And the delta chakra has a, a single function, namely to allow other spirits to enter into the body and also possibly for your own spirit to leave your body. Uh, the delta chakra has also quite a strong interaction with the, with the heart chakra and with the throat chakra, so it's really intertwined with the two. Um, so you can imagine that for a person who's dying this chakra is immensely important because the spirit will want to leave the body in a good way and if the delta chakra is not functioning well then sometimes the spirit is in a way lingering in an already deceased body and some people have had very traumatic experiences uh, with that with their body being eaten or being cut up while they're still being in a way inside to it and feeling it all well usually that at the moment of death um, the spirit is just stepping out of their bodies um, so besides having a pleasant death experience uh, it is very important for people who work in the shamanic tradition so in the shamanic tradition you often work together with uh, ancestors uh, with greater spirits, with power animals, um, who will either fully or partially enter into your own energy body. So for this to happen in a smooth way, also you have to step aside a little bit. So usually people move their own energies away from the top of their bodies into their lower chakras, uh, so that the upper parts of their bodies become empty and the upper part of the body can be filled with a new spirit which will then also take control over um, that part of the energy body. It's also possible for a spirit to enter uh, through the crown chakra but uh, usually through the crown chakra it uh, works with a more subtle vibration so usually images or thoughts or voices can come in um, through the crown chakra, but if you're talking about really a spirit taking control over the body and really using your arms or your mouth to say something or to do something or to perform a healing uh, or even to fight for you. Uh, in the voodoo tradition this is actually relatively common that you summon a warrior spirit to enter into your body um, before you go into, into battle because it is simply a spirit which has a lot more knowledge and skill and um, capability than your own spirit often has. So it is safer for your body to be guided by an experienced and seasoned veteran than by a relative newbie like yourself. Um, the Delta Chakra is a chakra which is in its yeah, normal position always closed because you don't want any random spirit to pop into your body and start playing with the controls. Um, usually the delta chakra will only open if the energy is considered to be very nice and good and safe and pure and this is determined by the throat chakra and the heart chakra. So if these chakras feel it is a great place, I feel relaxed, I feel loved, I feel nice, I don't feel that there's anything evil or bad or whatever going on, then these chakras will open and when especially the back of the throat chakra and the heart chakra will open up, then also slightly later the delta chakra will respond by also opening itself. So um, getting possessed or allowing a spirit to enter into the body is usually not um, you snap your fingers and it happens. It is usually about being in an atmosphere for a while, usually about 10 to 20 minutes, which causes these uh, other chakras, the throat chakra and the heart chakra, to open. 
to really feel that you want to become one, you want to be uh, you know, one with your environment, that the energy there is good, that is great. And then after a while, usually about half an hour, 40 minutes, the Delta Chakra will be open enough to allow a spirit to enter into your body easily. These things also happen within non-shamanic traditions. Uh, I already mentioned a little bit the Voodoo tradition, where often a more experienced uh, spirit is asked to take over. Uh, but also within, for instance, Christianity, um, or uh, Hinduism, or even uh, Islam, these things are not unheard of, that uh, another spirit will enter into the body and um, will uh, give messages uh, by using that body. Not everybody is able to do it, even if their third chakra, if, even if their delta chakra is fully functional. Depending on the um, uh, vibration of the of the energy body, it is more or less difficult and more or less pleasant for another spirit to enter into it. If my own energy body is very dense and it's very structured, then it is very hard for another being to control. It is like uh, an ant trying to drive a truck. <laughs> like there is simply not enough uh, strength, enough power in the spirit to work with the very heavy machinery, with the very heavy controls which are there in the body. If however the energy of the body is very, um, yes, very much more light, much more flexible, much more responsive nature, then it's much easier for uh, a spirit to use that body. Um, the disadvantage of having such a responsive body is also that it's very sensitive not only to spirits but also to other things in its environment. So the person will tend to experience a lot of energetic stress from yeah, uh, things or from negative energies around them, from heavier vibrations, from arguments. They will just sense all these things as well. So the talent to, yeah, work with, uh, with guides comes at a price. It's very often that people who have such a talent will also separate themselves. They will try to live almost like a hermit, secluded from other people, secluded from too many influences because they find them uh, troublesome or disturbing uh, because of their open and sensitive nature. Um, if the environment is a lot energetically more pure, more healthy, uh, then these people will, will suffer less and they will also be able to have a much more uh, yeah, normal life, you could say. In general, inviting another spirit into your body is a, uh, also an experience which has both a healthy and an unhealthy side. Um, the spirit coming from a place of greater uh, purity, greater freedom, will feel frustrated by the limitations imposed by being in the energy body and will tend to clean house a bit. It is like for the spirit it is as if it comes into a very untidy room and it will start putting things into place, clearing, clearing the floor so it can work. So the spirit cleaning up a bit uh, usually also means that a lot of your uh, own personal um, emotional problems, mental problems and other things are at least temporarily while the spirit is active pushed aside or cleaned out or removed from your energy system uh, which is of course very beneficial for your own flow and it also shows you how to deal with these problems so it forms very good paths for self-healing also to invite the spirit into your body. One of the disadvantages is that um, your body is made to be powered by your own spirit. So your own spirit is kind of like the battery on which everything runs and if you remove the battery like the energy level will just go down and things will start to malfunction and to deteriorate. And the same will happen if another spirit is taking control because even though that spirit has power it is not of the same vibration your own energy body cannot use it. So your own energy body will start incurring deterioration and damage depending on how long 
the, the, the other spirit is within the body. So if it is for a relatively short period of time, like 10-20 minutes, um, there's hardly any damage, but especially if you don't do it too much, like once a week, um, there's really not an issue. Um, but if you start doing it more often or for prolonged periods of time, as some shamans do during rituals, it often takes hours, um, then the drain can be quite heavy and the person might need several weeks to recover from doing such a heavy healing ritual or summoning ritual. So there's really a price to be paid in yeah, health for uh, being able to have access to such experience, uh, such skills and powers as the Spirit gives to you. So ideally it would be a mix. So you build up as much skill and power by yourself. The Spirit can come in and then they will have a lot more uh, machinery already ready and waiting for them. Uh, so they can do a lot more with your energy body in a shorter period of time. So they won't have to be there as often or as long because you can do a lot more by yourself. And the Spirit can show you a few new tricks. Like, but you can do this with your energy body or you can have access to those energies and to heal with that. And from these experiences you're having while the spirit is within your body, your own energy body can really grow and develop new talents. And like all your hidden talents can come forward under the guidance of such uh, spirits. Um, there's lots of stories, especially in the Christian tradition, of uh, a saint or an angel entering into a person's body and then the person um, yeah, having new talents or having new gifts. Uh, because of the presence of that angel or um, of that saint. And also sometimes even miraculous healings like uh, the sight being restored or walking being restored. Uh, often these healings will then obviously have come from energetic sources rather than direct physical defects. But yeah, it's fantastic of course if such a uh, um, yeah, crippling uh, circumstance can be healed by such a spirit, by really having faith, having trust, having a complete surrender uh, to the energy which is in such a place so that the spirits of that place can come in and create a transformation in your energy body by using your Delta Chakra. So. I hope this will be uh, some valuable uh, knowledge on how this uh, chakra works and how it exactly the deeper levels of channeling function. Thank you for listening.